and welcome to MicroStrategies Mobile App Developer Academy. This course is entitled Time Series Widget. The Time Series Widget displays an area graph that allows the user to choose which section of the graph to view at which time. The widget displays data over a specific period of time on an iPhone, iPad, or Android device. This widget is displayed as a line graph on the device. You can configure the widget to display multiple data series on the same graph. Here's an example of a time series widget on the iPhone. This dashboard gives an overview of profit, units sold, and inventory per product category. If you rotate the device, you can see a time series slider. The widget displays a line for units sold, profit margin, and sales for each category. Four time periods are displayed, one month, one year, two years, and the hold period which in this example goes from January 2009 to December 2011. You can perform the following actions. Display tooltips by tapping and holding the graph. Select one of four time periods. Scroll through the time axis by swiping horizontally. You can drag the highlighted portion of the slider at the bottom, which highlights the current time range, to shuttle, expand, or focus the time period being viewed. To determine the range of values you want to view, drag the left or right edge of the slider to adjust its size. To view the legend of all metrics, tap the bar on the right edge of the widget. You can tap on a series in the legend to highlight it and tap again to unhighlight it. The number of data points displayed in a time series widget is determined by the maximum number of rows displayed in the grid on which it is based. Depending on how things are configured, the query may go back to the database to get more data points in a change time range. Now let's build a dashboard for an iPad containing a time series widget. The data set used by the widget should meet the following requirements. Have at least one attribute in the rows. The attribute provides the values among the horizontal axis of the widget and should be time-based. In this example, we have month. You also need to have at least one metric in the columns. The metric values are graphed in the widget. Android devices can only display up to two metrics in a time series widget in MicroStrategy 931. In this example, we have profit growth, profit margin, and revenue growth. To view data for multiple series, place at least one attribute on the columns. The attribute elements are graphed on the widget's axis. In this example, we have category. Ensure that the row and column headers of the report are not merged. In MicroStrategy Web, let's open the document in design or editable mode. Let's add the data set to our document. From the insert menu, let's point to widget, then mobile, and select time series. Let's click the location on the document where we want to place the widget. The grid graph containing the widget is displayed. If desired, we can resize the widget by clicking and then dragging its handles. From the data set objects panel on the left, Select attributes and metrics and drag them on the top of the widget. You can configure the time series widget to provide data across multiple time intervals. For example, you can display data for a one month time period. However, the widget can also display data for one year, several years, or for the entire time period. You can add intervals to the widget by configuring the widget's properties. Right-click the widget, then select Properties and Formatting. The Properties and Formatting dialog box opens. From the left, select Widget. Click the Widget Properties icon. The Time Series Properties dialog box opens. Interval selectors let users select the time period for which they want to view data in the widget, allowing them to analyze data at different levels of detail. You can add, rearrange, or delete interval selectors in a Time Series widget. In our demo, we're going to create four time intervals, one month, six months, one year or 12 months, two years or 24 months. To add a new interval selector to the widget, click Add. The new selector is added and displayed. Type a name for the selector in the name field. For the first one, one month, we're going to put 1M as the name. From the template drop-down list, select the control in the document that contains the time-based attributes you want to use to create the interval selector. The granularity is automatically determined by the last, rightmost, attribute on the grid's rows, month in our case. From the interval unit drop-down list, select the units in which you want to specify the length of time of the interval size field. 
For example, to define a six month interval, you can select month as the interval unit. Type the number of units you want to include in the interval in the interval size field. In our first example, as the interval unit is defined as one month, we type one to specify a one month time interval. A summary of the interval selector's properties is displayed in the bottom pane. Let's repeat it to add interval selectors 6m, 1y, and 2y. You can define an information window that displays when the widget is tapped and add a link in the widget to open a report or another document. Let's click OK and save the document. Now let's look at the result on the iPad screen. You can choose different time periods in the selectors at the top. If you choose 1M, one month displays, here November 2011. If you choose 6M, six months display, here from July 2011 to December 2011, and so on. You can use the slider at the bottom to change the time range displayed. Click on the arrow at the right to display the legend. Here, as we have several product categories and several metrics, we can see all the possible combinations. If you click on one element in the legend, only the value for this element displays on the graph. And that's a wrap for this model course on the Time Series widget.